I have made a mistake. When I launched these carabiners, I of course knew that if you pushed on them from the side, they could pop open. Now I carried one of these for months before I released them and I had beta testers carry them. And we only really had one report of someone having an issue with that. And I just kind of wrote that off as, as a fluke. But it turns out I was wrong. And for many people, not everybody, much less than probably 10% of people, they have issues with the carabiners popping open on them. And it seems to be that people who use these on their belt or they just carry them in their hands, it's not an issue. But the people who put them into a bag or sometimes into their pocket, that's when you can run into issues with them popping open like this. Now with this being my first big Kickstarter, I really needed it to be just a home run success. And it hasn't been. I've had to refund several people for their carabiners. I've done replacements for some people who had burrs or fit and finish issues. And none of that should have happened. The product should have been better from day one. I launched it in a hurry. I made them in a hurry. And that was a big mistake. And I've learned a lot from this Kickstarter and I'm definitely not gonna make those mistakes in the future. But I wanna fix as many of those mistakes as I can now. I wanna leave customers with a good taste in their mouth moving forwards. Cause that's really what this business needs is right now more than anything, I need loyal customers that'll support me as I go forwards and keep buying my stuff. So we're gonna take these existing carabiners and we are going to retrofit them so that they have lateral stability. If it works out, my plan is to offer a kit that I can send to anybody who already has one of these carabiners and they can attach it to their existing carabiner themselves so they have that little bit of extra peace of mind that is not going to pop open. My plan right now looks like this. I basically have two parts, one that goes on the right, one that goes on the left of the carabiner, locating in the slot that is closest towards the little mouth thing. These little wings will capture this top hook, preventing side to side motion, or at least that's the idea. Now these parts are not just a simple like 2D sheet metal part. It does have this little machined boss here to help keep it in place and to provide some surface area for the threads. My plan is to machine these in bulk using the salami slice method. So I'll do a row on top and then cut it off with a slitting saw and then repeat that going down my material. I should be able to get about 160 out of a six inch long piece of material. One of the things that makes these parts scary is they need tiny, tiny threaded holes. This is the tap that I'm using to put threads in those holes. And this is the drill bit that'll make those holes that get tapped. These are the screws going in those tapped holes. And in this little bag right here, there are 50 screws. So that's how small we're talking. Well, here's a bummer. Remember that little tiny tap that I had? I assumed it had either an eighth inch shank or a 3 16th inch shank, both of which I have tons of collets for. Turns out it fits somewhere in between those two sizes and I don't have a single collet that'll work. So I guess that means I'm gonna move on to another project. I have my tools and materials set aside in a box here and I'll see you in a couple days when the collets come in. The new collets here, let's start making those parts. I have the tools and their tool holders. Next step is to touch them off and then I should be good to start machining. Tools are touched off, we're set up, and we should be good to machine. I'm using my normal salami slice setup with the material sticking straight up in the mod vise with my Kowalski Precision work stock. That got a little bit squeaky at the end with the slitting saw, but it seemed to have worked. The only question is, where did my parts go? There's one, there's one, there's one. Oh, there's a couple. Well, I have like five. 
In retrospect, I should have emptied my chip tray before doing this. There's one. Well, I found most of them. I'm supposed to have seven of each, but I was able to find six of each. And these are definitely the smallest parts I have ever made. All right, let's see if they fit. So one end, maybe undo this. One end should fit there. I'm doing this upside down. This end should go there. It fits. This end should go there. And then we can take one of these teeny tiny screws and put in the teeny tiny screw. Well, I can't believe it worked that well. I don't think we're quite perfect yet, but that's pretty good. It makes a little bit of a clicky noise because the aluminum parts are hitting on the carabiner unless it goes in dead straight. But if I put a little bit of a chamfer on there and give it a pretty heavy tumble, maybe even just the tumble will be enough for it to guide itself in. I made some really minimal changes to cam just to get better finishes. And I added in one salami slice this time so we can start testing out if the automation on it works. And if it goes well, then I'll do a run overnight and we'll see how many we can make. All right, we hit our first snag. We broke that itty bitty tap. You can see it in the last hole right here. The other parts are still good. So I'm gonna uh, replace the tap and then keep going. I don't know why the tap broke, which is a little bit annoying. I think even if I had been standing there watching it, I wouldn't have seen anything. I guess I'm gonna try slowing it down a bit and maybe that'll help, but I don't really know what else to do there. So I made the cam changes, put a new tap in and started it. Right now it is slicing off the part so we can start with a fresh slate on the next batch. There wasn't really much I could do to keep the tap from breaking. So all I did was make the tap hole just a little bit deeper and then I also stuck the tap out more when I put this one in. My theory with that is that it would give it better coolant access, which would hopefully help it not break. If that doesn't work, then I guess my only option is to try buying a form tap. And they're a little bit more expensive, but if it works, it works. I just got back from a hardware store run, and while I was gone, this machine ran for about three hours, theoretically making 70 parts. The question is, can we find them? So I just counted up how many of those little pieces I was able to recover. And remember when I said that I made 70 of them? I found 80 of them, but I double checked my cam and there was actually supposed to be 84. I made one more row than I originally thought. So out of the 84, losing four of them, I can totally deal with that. And I think going forwards, if I empty my chip pan every time before cutting them, I'll be able to find those other ones. I would be willing to bet that the other four are buried in the chips in the chip pan and those will be almost impossible to find. I'm gonna go ahead and finish running the rest of this bar, then we can tumble these overnight and start doing pictures and stuff and announcing them tomorrow morning. A couple days later now and very cold and very snowy but last night i did a big production run of those little retrofit parts up until now i've just kind of played around with small batches that were nice and safe and i could do while i was here for the most part but last night i ran 200 parts overnight should have taken about seven hours and there's no errors or anything on the machine so i think I think we're good. Also, I did something that it was the most requested thing that you guys have ever asked for. I got a haircut. So getting all those parts out of the chip tray kind of sucks. And if I do a lot of this in the future, I'll need to find a better way. But I don't think I'm really gonna need to make any of these parts ever again. 
These are all of the parts that I've made up until now. There should be about 80 in here. And this is what I just gathered. And this looks like more than twice as much. So I'm sure I don't have all of them, but at very least we're in the right ballpark. Now we just need to get these cleaned up. Earlier in this process, I made this little basket by taking just an existing plastic bin I had and Swiss cheesing it or cheddar cheesing it. And I can just take this and stick it in my ultrasonic cleaner and it does a pretty good job of getting all the chips and stuff out. All right, now they're nice and pretty. I'm gonna measure, I don't know, a dozen, two dozen of them to make sure they're all in spec, and then I can start tumbling. I bought this green tape the other day after watching a Saunders Machines Work video, and I've started using it to mark different bins. So green means good, blue means in progress, red means bad. Now, unfortunately, a lot of my bins are already red, so I just have to make sure I mark them green so I don't think these are bad. So one of the nice things about the salami slice method is it is shockingly consistent. As I was measuring these, I found that they all checked exactly the same with my calipers, which means that the variation on them is more fine than what this can measure. And I would consider these plus or minus 1,000. So at very least, the thickness on these are within plus or minus 1,000, which for the Tormach is pretty darn good. I only measured the height. I didn't measure the width on these because these are going into a powder coated hole and the powder coating on that hole is going to have way more variation than these will. I've designed them with plenty of clearance and it, that won't be a problem. I have no idea how many are in here. It's at least 250, so about 125 pairs. I don't see myself needing more than that ever. So I think I'll call this a pretty good little production run. The next step is to get these into the tumbler. Of course, both my tumblers are running right now, but this one is ready to be emptied. So I want these things to be smooth but I don't want them to be so rounded over that they get eaten down to nothing. So that means I'm gonna use my less aggressive media. I also want them to be darker so that they're closer to the color of the titanium, which means that I'm not gonna use very much water and I'm gonna use more soap. This is the media that I'll be using. It's a mixture of a bunch of different medias. Basically, whenever I had my normal media wear out, I would put it in this bin and this then becomes my less aggressive media because it's all just the worn out stones. And you can tell they are much more rounded over than the other media, which means they will work slower. They're also a lot smaller, which means there's less energy in the tumbling motion, which again, means they are less aggressive. I'll check those in a couple hours to see how they look. They should be fine. I've done enough of this tumbling that I, I think I'll know the results I get. My biggest worry is they've got that flat side on them and I think they're all gonna stick to the outside of the tumbler. And if that's true, then we'll have to do some experimenting. I was recently told that if you put a little bit of sand in your tumbler, that grit will get in there and break up the vacuum and help with that. And I've been looking for an excuse to test that. If that happens, then we'll do the sand method and see if that helps. Man, I wish I had gotten that on camera. So I just opened up the tumbler here and literally like the entire surface of this rubber gasket thing was just covered in all of the parts. You can see some of them fell off when I removed it. There's even some more there. Uh, there were so many parts on it, which means our backs are not tumbling as well as I would like. They're really, they've gotten some tumbling in. Do we dare try the sand trick? I think we do. I don't know what's gonna do to my finish, but I, having them stick to the sides isn't gonna help. So let's try the sand trick. I have no idea if this will work, but we'll give it a try. That trick with the sand worked beautifully. There wasn't a single part stuck to the top or the sidewalls when I dumped them out. Now my problem is I have three or 400 parts in a bin with media that's about the same size. So now I get to sort these for the next half an hour. The 
The parts are drying off, and once they're dry, they'll be ready to go to customers. By the time you're watching this video, those will be available. So if you have a Not For Climbing carabiner and you need to retrofit it for a little bit more stability, you can buy those on my Etsy store or on my website. They will be super cheap, under $4 plus shipping, which is basically what it cost me to make them. So if you want one, you can get them now and solve any problems that you, you might have with your carabiner. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for bearing with me as Sometimes I don't make perfect products. I try to, but I do make mistakes. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you next time.